Hey, g'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How. Excited about this one. In this how-to, we are gonna be running through how to install some LED driving lights, and in our case, some portable suns, onto the front of our four-wheel drive. Let's get started. We're continuing the build on the 21 D-Max. Check out the playlist at the top. We are into the 30s. There has been a stack of content, so check it out if you haven't already. These things are the Supernova Infinite 8.5s. They're new LED driving lights. The spec sheet on these guys is out of control. We're talking lifetime warranty on these guys. They're IP69. That's, that's not just waterproof, that's gurney-proof. And they're built and designed for Australian conditions. So for example, the lenses are from a Lexan material. Think prison windows. These things use Gore-Tex for the breather, which is critical for allowing the inside to breathe, but not allow any water in. The brackets are super chunky. They're five and a half mil, 316 stainless. The hardware that you get with as well, obviously stainless, but also any theft. Custom designed optics, and then probably critically, these guys have managed to get their hands on some Osram, Ausland black flat LEDs. And as of 2021, those little suckers produce the most lumens per square millimeter than anything out there. So super excited to get these guys installed. These are a twin pack and you know what? I was I was looking at the front of the D-Max while I was working out what to get here and there's a lot of space. There's a lot of space in there. So I thought, you know what? I might need to search for ships lost at sea. So I got another one and this is the triple pack that they do. So there's gonna be three of these suckers on the front of the D-Max. Now, I just wanna point out here that I paid for these myself. This, this is not a sponsored video or anything like that. If you do watch this though and go, you know what, Supernova, these are the lights that I need on my rig. It would be awesome if you could use the link that I'll have in the description of the video down below. And by using and sharing that link with your mates, it'll do two things. One, it will let Supernova know, hey, Adam from Video Show Me House Center. And two, it'll go a little way in support me bring out more of this content for all of you guys. But enough jibber jabber, let's get cracking on pulling these apart so we can work out how we're gonna get them installed onto there. So here we go, we've got our three lights with the different covers. I've gone with the upgraded spread covers there as well. We then get our fast fit wiring harness, our extra loom connectors so that it's literally plug and play for the D-Max. The extra loom for the triple pack, a full stainless hardware pack, including gaskets, as well as our any theft bolts and Allen keys. So step one is working out where you're gonna put these lights. Now, some people sort of go the roof light, depending on if you've got a cage or anything like that. You know, jeepers, you're gonna have pillar lights, that sort of stuff. Most people, bull bar, right? Now, in our case, we've got the hoopless design. We're gonna be rocking straight along the front here. Now, in our case, we have our little grill here. That's gonna need to get shunted back a little bit further, so we've got enough room for our bracket. And if you are doing the install on a D-Max, I recommend just taking out this top plate here like you've seen us do in other videos. That way you've got nice access down below to get to the back of all the wiring. So depending on your mounting position and the ball bar that you have, if that's where you're putting it, grab the stainless hardware that comes with the Supernova and get those guys bolted down into position where you want them so we can move on to the wiring. And there we go, all nicely bolted into place. <laughs> What do you reckon? I, I reckon these look awesome. I, I wanted to get something that would make the rig stand out a little bit and, and I reckon mission accomplished. I reckon those things are out of control. They look awesome. I may even may even sneak in a bit of a supernova light bar or something down there, but, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Next step is the wiring. You wanna feed the actual wire section of each of the lights through your grill so it's coming out at the back here and you've got nice and easy access once you remove this top section and then we want to get stuck into the harness now obviously that's going to plug in to our power source over here you can then route it back down to connect into our waterproof connectors for the supernovas now as far as the wiring side of things goes it's it's actually pretty easy this part is pretty easy there's three major components we have our wiring harness this has everything you need it's it's all fused it's the appropriate size wiring the plugs and even the switch for in cab we're going to be using one of the factory style ones instead, but that's gonna still work really nicely with that. These are the connectors, and the point of these is you don't have to do any crazy cutting or splicing or anything like that. And then these are the actual connectors for the spotlights themselves. A little yellow wire is the optional, because that's for our daytime running light. And other than that, that's, that's everything we need. So let's start unpacking these and getting that over to the lights. And here it is, here's the full kit all laid out. We have our two battery connections here, all pre-terminated. We have our 30 amp inline fuse. Everything, of course, is run via relay. Everything is heat shrinked. Coming along here, this is the input for our lights. This is the high beam input. So we want to 
get rid of this guy because that's not going to suit our D-Max. We want to get this particular loom. This is our factory connection. And then moving along, this is the output. These are the connections to our spotlights themselves. You want to get these. If you're going to be running the daytime running light, this is what you're going to need. And then those will plug straight in to the back of the spotlights. It's the same the same waterproof plug and I'll go straight into there. And then down the end here, this long bit of cable, this is what we need to send through our firewall and then install in cab to be able to switch the lights on and off. So our next step is routing and securing this loom into place. You wanna use your zip ties, make sure you're zipping everything onto the unmovable parts, not the movable parts, and get everything all nice and cable managed so it's up and out of the way. I'd recommend as well while you are doing the install is just to remove the fuse from the holder. That way if you do accidentally bump anything and then try and energize the circuit, it's not gonna be energized. Everything's gonna be nice and safe. Now, if you are wiring in the daytime running light, these little guys in here, it's easy to do. It's easy to do to get a wire out to those, a bit of a signal wire, a little bit of a power wire. You wanna to come to the factory loom. Here's our factory switch. The purple wire on the back, the back of the tab section, that is our daytime running light color. This is our inline connector and it has all six of the pins that's pinned to the headlight. So it does have the daytime running light as well. This is the harness you want to cut because you can always get another one of these, right? The connector that connects into the headlight loom, look for your little tab, flip him over, and the black wire in the middle there, that is the daytime running light feed. So you want to chop that one in half, do a standard sort of connector, make sure it's heat shrinked, that kind of deal. You want about a meter's worth of 10 amp cable so that when you're running the rest of it along the front here, you can splice these guys in along the way. And there it is, there's our patch cable all nice and installed. Make sure you use the little clip here just to clip it back onto the back of the headlight so it's all nice and neat. Here is our daytime running light cable and then that gets run along the front with the rest of the loom. You're giving yourself plenty of cable length so that wherever the final position you decide on for these guys, you can then join those guys together and connect it to the end of our cable. And there's our two switches. They're ready to be fed through our grommet there underneath the dash to our driver position. And if you are running the triple pack, you'll have a duplicate of the trigger wire. You don't need to run that separately all the way. You can chop that off up the top here and just join it in with the trigger wire that you've already installed as part of the main loom. So really go to town in making sure everything is nice and neat. Use things like this. This is the bash channel that runs all the way along and funnily enough, it's a channel so you can run your cabling in behind there, secure everything with zip ties. So at this stage, there's not much left, which is always a good sign. We have our power leads that just need to get plugged in right at the end. The only thing left is our switches. And if you are running the triple pack, you are gonna have two switches, but we don't need two switches. You can get away with just using one. These guys literally are just sending that little bit of signal through to our relays to say, hey, turn on the spotlights, please. So you can consolidate these in the same way that we consolidated the trigger wire. And that's our next step. We wanna run our switch through our little grommet. We just wanna pierce a little bit of a hole through there. You can pull the switch itself off so that it can fit through, push those through and pull it out the other side into the passenger footwell and then run it underneath the dash so it pops up over on the driver's side where we can get ready to reconnect and final position our switch. All right, doing great so far. We're on to one of the last steps, and that is organizing our switch. So you can use one of the existing supernova switches. You just need to drill a hole that is that diameter. I'm going for that factory look, so I'm gonna be using one of these guys. But the upside of these, is they fit in here. They fit exactly in the factory locations and they look like a factory switch. So once you've got access to the back, you just need to work out which blank you're gonna be removing. I'm gonna be putting the switch right on that guy there. So I need to remove that blank. And there we go, we've got our blank removed. So then we have uh, this guy ready to go in its place. Before we do though, we wanna sort out the wiring. Now we've already got three of the four. We have our earth and our in and our out as far as our factory loom. They're simple, we just need to join those together. We've gotta to do something about the red one though. This is our dash light illumination. So that means we've gotta plug our red wire here into a cable here that lights up when we turn our dash lights on. Now, if you've got an X train, you'll have an actual plug that sits down the back here. That's also not used for anything. That's this one right in the back. If you don't have an X train, that's okay. You can still use this wire. You'll see that we have a bunch of different colors here. The one we are after is the brown one. The brown one is our dash illumination. So in our case, this is a redundant plug so we can chop out the cable that we need. If you have a switch here and you are gonna need that, you'll just need to splice in the red wire for our switch. And there we go. That's what that should look like. You're gonna need the red to go up to that brown like we just talked about, the blue across to the yellow, the black to the black, and then the white from the supernova to 
the blue of the switch. So we're all done here and we are getting close. We just got tidy up at the front. We need tidy up here so we can slot that into position. One handed mode, we can slot that home until it clicks in. There we go, make sure it works fine. Then we wanna plug our harness back in. Let's have a bit of a quick little test, make sure we're working. Perfect, look at that. And the same with any wiring around the pedals, guys. You wanna make sure everything's tucked up nice and neatly, zip tie central. You wanna make sure that is all nice and safe. Once we're done there and everything is all tucked away, we're gonna head back out to the engine bay for our final tidy up before we can give these guys a proper test. And onto our final step, and that is sorting out our spider web that we've created here. You may or may not have as much 12 volt gear here. Like I said, I've got a plate coming to tidy all this up. You'll see that in a future video. But for the moment, it's a matter of tidying up your relays if you have both or just the one. We wanna make sure you don't forget your Davis silicon down there on any cut that you've made in the grommet. And then it's just a zip tie central, tidying all of this up so that it's nothing's against the engine, nice and tidy and secure over here. And then the final, final step is plugging this guy in, which means connecting it up to the battery. You've got your positive on this side and negative in this side. Get those fuses back in place. If you are using the double, make sure your 15 and your 30 fuses are around the right way. Once they're in, let's give these a test. Before we go and do the full test that I wanna show you guys to see what this is like in the dark, because it's still a bit light, I'll have to film that in a couple of hours. But in the meantime, let's do a quick test, make sure they're working as designed. If we head around here, we'll turn on our parkers. And there we go, we can see there's our driving light switch in the middle there. That's turning on with everything else, so looking nice and factory. So that's pretty cool, let's head around. Let's see if our, there's our daylight running lights. Oh, there they are, check it out, yeah! How awesome. So we've got a couple of little, nice little subtle, that's the thing I like about those, they're just a little subtle. Yeah, I've got some lights on. It's a bit of a, a bit of a, a precursor for what's to come. So let's fire these guys up. We're on our high beams. If we get in here and press our, there's our blue, you can see. So it tells us that they're on, and are they ever? Jeez, they are definitely on. So they look absolutely awesome. They are out of control, bright, far out. That looks awesome, full rally spec, love it. Now, final part of the video is actually seeing how these perform. For me, it's not quite dark out there yet, so need to wait a couple of hours. For you though, in YouTube land, it's gonna take a couple of seconds. We're gonna take these guys out on a super dark country road, fire them up and see how they perform. And here we go, we're on the way and bam, there it is. <laughs> These things are genuinely very, very bright. You can see all the way down to the end there and it gives you a bit of an idea of the spread. Here we are again, lights on, and we can see just how much spread there is around. I mean, we've obviously got the, the crazy column, but check out the trees and the canopy. It's not too bad for such a strong pencil. Here we are, another version on the way to the static shop. There it is right down the end. If we zoom in on that, you can see just how much light is flooding that area. Right down the end of the road there is about the eight, 900 meter mark from the corner of where we just started. From here, we go to some static tests and you can see in this mode here, we're just talking straight parks, just the standard parks that are on the D-Max, the daytime running lights. Then we flick over to the fogs. These are the fogs that are on the new bull bar that we did the install for, the upgraded ones. They're the upgraded LED fog light. Then we flick over to the low beam, or the standard beam, I guess you could call it. It's just the normal X-terrain LED by LED uh, headlights. Then we flick over to the high beams. You can see it makes bugger, bugger or difference to the low beams. It just gives us that teeny, teeny, tiny extra bit of distance. And then, bam, there, there there's our triple pack, the Supernova 8.5s. This is not with the extra cover. We'll have a look at that in a minute. If we zoom in here, you can just see right down the end there on the bend is about 900 meters, according to Google Maps. You can see just how much light there is. And there we go, the same position, the same everything else, but with those spread covers on. And you can see that does make a difference. Just past the power pole there, if we rock back before and after, you can see that there is that extra bit of spread, which is pretty cool. So if you're after that, definitely check those covers out. And here we go, just a bit of a cheeky, cheeky view of the daytime running lights with the triple lights. I reckon that looks awesome. 
So there we go, guys. That is the real-world test of the Supernova Infinite 8.5 Triple Pack. Now, if you do want some more information about these, make sure you use my link in the description down below. That lets Supernova know that I've sent you. And also, if you're there and you go ahead with anything, make sure you use this discount code right there. That way, you're going to get a bit of a discount off the total cost. As always, a massive thank you to the patrons of Video Show Me How via Patreon. Your extra support goes a long way, as I always say guys and i really truly appreciate it and that about does it for this video guys we have some more build on the way for the dmax we're not done yet there's still more to come if you haven't subscribed yet consider doing so but other than that guys i hope that you have an amazing day and i will see you in the next video cheers guys